Buongiorno. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, you know, Dorina's Kitchen coming to you live almost every day, Monday through Friday, definitely, sometimes Saturday. So please, if you watch, make sure you hit the little dingy bell on Facebook Live so that you always get my messages that you're coming live. Um, and the rest of the time, you can find them on YouTube. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dorina's Kitchen youtube.com slash Dorina's Kitchen. You know where to find me. Anyway, I have a surprise for you guys today. You might notice I have a little bit more headroom today. Some help, but I had to make the camera further away. And, but I have a tall person today helping me in the kitchen. This is my Carlo. He's my baby boy. I wasn't sure what I was going to do today, but then I realized I have a lot of random things that have to get done here in my kitchen and since this is quarantine kitchen we're doing what we can do each day with what we do and i never want to waste anything so i've got a bunch of things that really need to be taken care of so you're doing it with me today so first off i had i just got a new box of veggies and i got fresh mushrooms and i have these mushrooms that i actually didn't use from this past week they're still in good condition but these are gonna go first, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these mushrooms. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those. I got a lemon that's half bad, so we're gonna use the good half and this one. So we are going to, that's gonna go perfect with the mushrooms you'll see. And um, I have some bread that got left in the toaster yesterday. So we're turning that into breadcrumbs, putting it in the bag. We're doing a bunch of little odds and ends and you're just joining me. So anyway, we're gonna actually, so, Yesterday, I'm sure you guys have done this before, you put some bread in the toaster. This is my good Ezekiel bread. So this is actually no wheat, it's all grains, other grains, something like that, sprouted. Um, but it got left in the toaster and nobody ate it. So it's nice and dry. So I right away I threw it in the food processor because I knew it was gonna blend it up. So that is project number one. And I got to do it now because I need the, the whole reason I'm showing you the breadcrumbs is because I need the processor for something else. So I got to finish this up. Now this is my bag of breadcrumbs from the freezer. So it only has a little bit in it. I reuse bread bags because they're already there. I just take it out and put them back in. So... Had a little bit. I didn't want to make a lot of noise. You can smell the sesame seeds. <laughs> All right, good enough. Carla, hold that open. Okay, and that's you tie um, tie that up in a knot. That little job is done. Dry this out. Those in the freezer. Yeah. Actually, we um. Yeah, from the freezer. See, this is awesome. I have help today. Okay. So we have. Um, actually, before we get totally started, I wanted to share something. What did I just do with my little? What? Oh, <laughs> right in front of me. I don't know if you're going to notice from there, but I have two thumbs with band-aids on them, so they're coming off. I don't have a boo-boo. I just have cracked, <laughs> I have uh, dry skin from all the hand washing I'm doing. So my secret is this. Wow, nice and, look at nice and soft. So. In here, this is not Nivea. This is something that somebody gave me the container. This is beeswax that a friend of mine in Italy gave me, I'm telling you, 15 years ago, and I'm still using it. I take the teensy, teensy, tiniest bit, and I put it on whatever little crack I have on my fingers or thumbs, which I get all the time, and I put a Band-Aid on it before I go to bed. Just leave it like that, just the wax on top of the little crack and a Band-Aid, and then I take them off in the morning, and they are soft. So nice. I just thought I'd share that with you. So if you ever get your hands on some beeswax, um, this stuff is magic. Oh, don't 
I'll take my oregano. Something else. I like it, but it's oregano. So I check. <laughs> He's testing me, making sure I'm my Italian oregano. Oh, I love it. All right, what should we do first? Did you want to get started on the mushrooms? Yeah, let's do the mushrooms first. What the heck? All right. So we already wiped these down. They're not wet. You don't want them to be wet right now because we're going to wet them ourselves. So all we're going to do, here, Carl, I'm going to get you started. We're going to cut them in half, and then we're going to slice them. So if you have button mushrooms, if, you have, if sometimes you can get the little teeny-weeny ones, they're nice to do whole or just cut in half once. But we're going to take, let's see how many we're going to do. Um, let's just get started. The ones with the big stems on them, as long as they're not ugly, we leave them. If the stem is ugly, trim it or cut it. So what I have here is some white mushrooms. You can do them with the big knife or you can do them with the little knife, whatever you're more comfortable with. I like the big knife for this. Um, you can use white mushroom. Wait, let me show you. I've got white mushrooms and I've got cremini mushrooms. So they're brown ones and white ones. Mix and match. So as we cut these, we're going to put them in there. Hang on. It works better if you put the flat side down. All right, let's try that out. She's <laughs> got a big one. All right, there you go, Ooh. see? Oh, imagine that. If it wasn't for Dorena's kitchen, I wouldn't know how to cut. <laughs> You're so funny. All right, so while he's doing that, I'm going to take my ugly lemons that I just showed you. You can use this. I'm gonna push that aside for a minute. And so these are not great. Oops, I talked about the knife going the right way. That one's mushy, that one's good. And this one's actually the other way. I think they just got, actually it's not bad. They actually just got cold, so they got a little soft. But I think this may just be enough. So put those in the bin there for a minute, because we're gonna need those. And, no more. Yeah, one more. They, okay, so we're going to marinate some of these. We're going to make that nice Italian marinated, perfect for an antipasto. You can put them on a sandwich, or you can just eat them as they are. Mm, they have that tang to them, I'll show you. Um, the other thing I'm going to do with some of these, because this is a lot of marinated mushrooms, and I don't know if we're going to go through them all at once, is I am going to take some, and I'm going to put them in the freezer. It's not optimal as far as having them. You're not going to eat them fresh like that when you defrost them. There's a lot of water in them. But they're fine to throw in a soup. They're fine to throw in an omelet or a frittata. They're fine to do anything like that. So I am going to freeze a few of them. Just probably one bag. The rest we're going to marinate, put under oil, and put in the fridge. So you can actually slice. Well, we don't have to slice all of them now. We can finish it later. But um, I think that... Uh, you know, like two more mushrooms will marinate these because they, they shrink down. So this may be a nice sized bowl of mushrooms, but once you marinate them, they all go and they get, you know, little and the, all the goodies in there just kind of drawn out and make them nice and right, just make sure that when you're cutting also, especially when you're doing this for like an antipasto like this, try to get them all the same size that so makes it uniform, makes it look pretty. You can... It works better if you put the flat side down. All right, let's try that out. <laughs> She's got a big one. All right, there you go, Ooh. see? Oh, imagine that. If it wasn't for Dorena's kitchen, I wouldn't know how to cut. <laughs> You're so funny. All right, so while he's doing that, I'm going to take my ugly lemons that I just showed you. You can use this. I'm gonna push that aside for a minute. And so these are not great. Oops, I talked about the knife going the right way. That one's mushy, that one's good. And this one's actually the other way. I think they just got, actually that's not bad. They actually just got cold, so they got a little soft. But I think this may just be enough. So put those in the bin there for a minute, because we're gonna need those. And, one more. Yeah, one more. Cause they, okay, so we're gonna 
marinate some of these. We're gonna make that nice Italian marinated, perfect for an antipasto. You can put them on a sandwich or you can just eat them as they are. Mm, they have that tang to them, I'll show you. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do with some of these, because this is a lot of marinated mushrooms, and I don't know if we're gonna go through them all at once, is I am gonna take some and I'm gonna put them in the freezer. It's not optimal as far as having them. You're not gonna eat them fresh like that when you defrost them, there's a lot of water in them. But they're fine to throw in a soup, they're fine to throw in an omelet or a frittata, they're fine to do anything like that. So I am gonna freeze a few of them, just probably one bag of the rest we're gonna marinate, put under oil and put in the fridge. So you can actually slice, well, we don't have to slice all of them now, we can finish it later. But um, I think that, uh, you know, like two more mushrooms will marinate these because they, they shrink down. So this may be a nice sized bowl of mushrooms, but once you marinate them, they all go and they get, you know, little and the, all the goodies in there just kind of draw them out and make them nice and, right, just make sure that when you're cutting also, especially when you're doing this for like an antipasto like this, try to get them all the same size so that makes it uniform, makes it look pretty. All right, that's good, that last one. Put those in there. All right. Then, we got some fun odds and ends for you today. All right, we'll put these aside. Actually, you know what you can do, Carlo? Is put some, you can slice a few more. So base, or we'll do, okay, we'll do it after. This is a good freezer bag, so we're gonna slice some, put them in here, and then put them directly in the freezer. So that's what's gonna go with that. Do we put these now? If you want. While I'm talking, you can cut it and get stuff done. So anyway, so what we're gonna start doing while he's still cutting a few, is we're gonna take some of these seeds out. We're just gonna put some lemon juice in here. You can do this with lemon juice or vinegar or both. I'm gonna put a little bit of both. So we're just gonna lemon juice. You need some acid to really make them good, but the lemon gives a nice flavor to it on top of a little vinegar. No, that one had any. No, no seeds in there. Just two seeds. I flung a seed across. All right. Oh. Okay. Let me get a spoon. Now, the fun thing about making these is that while you make them, so right now you see they're just solid, hard mushrooms. This is a good freezer bag, so we're gonna slice some, put them in here, and then put them directly in the freezer. So that's what's gonna go with that. Mm -hmm. Do we put these now? If you want. While I'm talking, you can cut it and get stuff done. So anyway, so what we're gonna start doing while he's still cutting a few, is we're gonna take some of these seeds out. We're just gonna put some lemon juice in here. You can do this with lemon juice or vinegar or both. I'm gonna put a little bit of both. So we're just gonna lemon juice. You need some acid to really make them good, but the lemon gives a nice flavor to it on top of a little vinegar. No, that one had any. No, no seeds in there. I flung a seed across. All right. Oh. Now, see, yesterday that would have cut my finger. That would have burned my fingers. I was actually burning yesterday when I was working, but now that they're nice and soft, they're healing. Okay. Let me get a spoon. Now, the fun thing about making these is that while you make them, so right now you see they're just solid, hard mushrooms. You can use red wine vinegar, you can use white wine vinegar. Oops, I for, oh my gosh, I almost poured without that one of those stoppy lids on. So let's uh, just be very careful. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put it in here, it's smaller, and just, all right. That's probably like two tablespoons-ish. And I'm going to start and say, make sure that I've got enough acid to make sure that they're all wet so that it's hitting them all. 
Mm. You can smell the lemon. You can smell the lemon and the vinegar. Now I'm gonna put in some olive oil, extra virgin. All right. Now's the fun stuff. We're gonna chop up some garlic. Oh, I got the garlic right in front of me here. I usually have it over there. I'm trying to be a little bit prepped. You wanna do the garlic? Sure thing. <laughs> You'd never know Carl is my personality child. That's what this keeps the, keeps the, uh, the let's see if, away. Let's see if you know how to do it the right way. Oh, not too bad. We cut the wrong end off. You gotta cut the root end off. If you cut the root, then it all falls off. There you go. Let's go with like, uh, I guess those three cloves is good enough. I'll dump this while we're doing garlic. Now you can mince these with a knife, but honestly, in something like this, you want to get it all over, we're going to um, use the garlic press and squeeze it out. Actually, you know what? Just hold on. We don't even need to, we don't even need to peel them when we're doing the garlic press. You want to do it? It's fun. Sure. Put them in there. Squeeze. Okay. That's good. Now. Okay. And Let's do the other one. What the heck? Since those first two didn't have skin on them, we didn't have to take it out. When you've got skin on it and you squeeze through this, then you want to pull it out each time. Okay. Oh, teamwork. Bloop. Bloop. <laughs> oh, my Carluch. All right. Here, I'll let you stir that up. Let's get these out of the way. All right, so Carlo chopped up a nice baggie of mushrooms. So these are gonna go in the freezer after. I got a few more to do. But they're gonna go in the freezer, that way I can use them later. I have some nice fresh ones that I'm gonna do something else with. But these ones, they're still good, they're still fresh, but before they go, and I don't know if I'm gonna do something with them in the next two days or not, so I'd rather preserve them now than lose them later. All right, so this, I'm gonna put this in the water now. And you can do that. I'll, I'll do the. No. Look at my parsley still going all week, but you never know. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it don't. Okay, there's some nice some stems I can pull out. All right. Ta-da! I love these. It's like it's like having flowers on the counter. I'm gonna do a chop a chop. What is that? Parsley. Now this is curly parsley. You know he doesn't even ever see the curly parsley because I always buy flat leaf parsley. This is flat leaf parsley is Italian parsley. But I got this in my box last week. It's all they had. It's actually still very nice. It smells good. But usually the flat leaf is more pungent. The curly leaf is usually prettier for you know garnishing and stuff. But this is organic. I'm like I'm getting it, and it was nice. I love, I don't know what it is, I love chopping parsley. I think I love the smell that comes up when I'm doing it. All right, there you go. Just mix it in with the mushrooms. Now some people, I put the garlic in little, but some people will put in big cloves. People like it that way because then the garlic marinates also and some people like to eat it that way. If you want to put bigger cloves or bigger chunks, by all means do. I like... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I like having a little bit of, um, you know, extra flavor in it. Now what's gonna happen is this is not very wet right now. Let me see how it is, bring it up here. See, it's already, look at this, they're already starting to sweat a little bit. They're gonna do that. So let's let them, I'm gonna put just a little bit, just a smidge more vinegar, like a tablespoon, and another little bit of oil. In the end, we're gonna put more oil in it but the, I want to keep it not too oily right now with the vinegar to sweat it all out. All right, stir those up, put them aside, and we're going to stir them every now and then. So when you're making these, you just stir them every now and then while, you know, leave, do them while you're cooking and just put them aside and every once in a while go stir them. And you're going to watch them become marinated. You actually see the process. They get smaller and smaller and they get softer. And all of a sudden they're just like, because the mushrooms really are spongy. So they really soak in all the goodies. 
Last thing, we're just gonna put in a smidge of salt and pepper. Not too much. I don't put too much pepper, just a little, a little salt. Salt also helps dry out all the leaves. You know, today, let's throw in just a little of this. When I have my, like, you know, like I say, when I have my oregano, I use a little bit of it. You can flavor these how you like. I like the parsley and the oregano. You can put basil in it if you want. It's not one of the things I usually put basil in. All right. So you want to set those aside and we will see what's next. What's next? Oh, totally random stuff. And I definitely got to wipe this down. We were just cutting garlic and stuff on there. You ever had a piece of fruit that you cut on a cutting board where you just cut onions or garlic? Yeah, whole different yeah. <laughs> Italian fruit. Tastes like garlic. I didn't really do too much on here. I cleaned it earlier. So, but I do like to make sure that I'm going from that to fruit that I uh, don't mix and match. Same thing with my knife, hold tight. Okay, so I have some random pieces of fruit that if I leave out, nobody will eat. Nobody will bother taking it and cutting the bad part off. So what does mommy do? Mommy makes a fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a while. <laughs> right? Let's see, what bowl am I gonna use? I'm gonna use the mushroom bowl because it's the size of bowl I want. Luckily, it had clean mushrooms in it. So, we're going to take my leftover fruit. Would you get my honey out, honey? My good Italian honey, honey? It should be in the bottom, top shelf of the bottom half. Okay. So, I have this bowl of random fruit here that... This cantaloupe, if the kids saw it, would never cut it. It's got black spots on it, but it's not soft. See, this time of year things get, that's the one I want, get kind of funky. But the thing is, the inside is still firm. It's really firm. So I, we cut half of it yesterday, and I cut it up. We just had it by, by itself. But <laughs> we're just going to carefully. You can do it laying down if you're not good at it, or you can lay down, or you can just cut the pieces off. So here, I'll let you cut those up right there. Into, cut yeah, up. cut them in little pieces and throw them in there. Actually, you use this one. That would be easier to use this. This is better to slice with. And yeah, not too little. Those are good pieces. Oh, they're good pieces. Bigger than that? Nah, that's fine. Little little slices are good. That means we got to cut them all. You want them all the same size. You want like a spoonful. When you get a nice spoonful of fruit salad, you want it to kind of be, you know, a couple different pieces on your spoon. It's not really the best time of year to buy cantaloupe. But we were getting so sick of just apples and oranges that Angelina the other day was like, Mom, please buy something else. So I did. All right, so this is a pear. This side is good. One side's bad, so I'm cutting that off. So just peel this. Actually, you, you know what, Carla? Here. You can peel it, take the seeds out, and I'll do a different one. Use the purple knife, and I'll use the pink knife. These are my cool favorite paring knives. So you can, if the skin is pretty, and these, like, these are organic, you can leave the skin on if you want. Adds a little more texture. And if they're, like I said, if they're organic fruit, then it's not that big a deal. Like this piece right here is really pretty, but over here is a brown spot. So. I'm just gonna cut off the ugly sides and I'll leave a couple little pieces of skin in there. You know the skin and the stems, the pieces that we mostly throw away, have a lot of vitamins in them. You know that, yeah. don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> the stem is where all the vitamins come up from the earth. The skin is what's getting all the vitamins from the sun. Come on, it's common sense, you know? But not everybody has common sense. Ta-da! So how, how do you want me to take these seeds out? Watch this. 
Cut it, put it down, cut it in half this way. Yeah, and look. Ta-da! Look at this. See? Okay, not like that. There you go. Do it nice and controlled. <laughs> there you go. See? See? Isn't that pretty? It's easier when it's quartered. You know, when you want to take the seeds out of something you're chopping. Cut it in half, then quarter it. And then, oh, isn't that cool with this thin <laughs> Okay. And then you can just cut across the center. See, this side was really firm. Or, yeah, here, and then we'll bump it at once. Okay, and you slicey. So we're gonna have, let's see what else we got. Oh, so I have one kiwi. It's getting a little, we're gonna throw it in, give it some color. So now we've got beautiful orange cantaloupe, some light colored white yellow pear, a little green kiwi. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna top it all with one little spoonful of honey. Honey, honey. This is honey I brought back from Italy. I use it very sparingly. So I'm making these, I'm making the kiwis a little bit smaller just because I want them to kind of spread around. Oh, this one. Here, get those two. And then I have two apple halves that I actually already had cut off that were still half good. So, you know, so many people I see that has one side of it's got a spot on it and they throw the whole apple away. I'm like, that's a sin. So if you have enough of them here, you can do the same thing you do with a pair with that one. So we got a little apple, a little pear, a little kiwi, a little cantaloupe. Now, I, I'm using doing this to use up what we've got. I do have some strawberries in the fridge, but they're brand new fresh. Otherwise, I would put some in, but I'm going to save those for something else. So, but that would look pretty. Unless we want to get one, get, get one strawberry. Let's figure it out. Just one? Yeah, just one big one. We'll cut a little bit and we'll make it look pretty. That's uh, always more fun that way. Remember, we eat with our eyes first. Now this is pretty, but are any of them? Uh, let's. All right, let's do a couple. Actually, there's a couple of them that look a little soft. Let's let's use those up before they go. Yeah. All right, we're gonna throw some strawberries in. See, I'm glad we checked. So, in go the strawberries. This cup will cut the middle. Oh, you got more of them. Okay. Yeah, might as well throw them in, and now it's really pretty. Those are the ones that you've pulled out. Uh, did I pull out that many? Yeah. Oops. All right. Oh my goodness, it's getting heavy. All right, here we go. That's more like it. Now, you know what else is really good in a fruit salad? Is if you have some fresh mint, just a couple little leaves chopped up really fine. It's really nice and refreshing. Now this is fine just like this, and especially with the strawberries in it and the melon, it's gonna make some kind of some juice on its own. But the honey, kind of like the vinegar with the mushrooms, the honey helps draw out. Mmm. Mm. Taste All right, now this is solid honey because this was, this is unpasteurized on anything. Um, you know, it's all natural from the mountain in Italy, but even so you can soften up a little bit at the top. One good 
spoonful. I'm basically, I'm just going to stir it around. The wetness will melt it. It'll get loose. And if you have it and you want to really, you know, be concerned about it, you can melt it gently either by putting the jar in hot water or putting some of the honey in one of these little, you know, in a little thingy and, and put hot water, hot water around it. I want to grab me one of the one of those bigger spoons. It's easier to. Mm. Yum. Thank you. This little spoon is too. Mm. Mm. Kind of gonna go to waste. I should give it to you. You can lick this one. Mmm. That's so good. That's one on the side of it. Oh. Fruit salad. What was that from? It was one of your kids shows. Fruit salad, the yum, wiggles. yum. The I think it was the Wiggles. You know, I think you're right. What? I think you're right. The Wiggles. <laughs> okay, and now we have this awesome, pretty fruit salad. Dude, Yummy. you're letting me down. <laughs> okay, see? Pretty fruit salad. Okay, why don't you uh, check the mushrooms here? Yep. They are looking at me. Just stirred them up before. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. some reaching across. All right, so see, let's show everybody. You can see that they're already, like, they're sweating and they're already getting softer. And they look so pretty. Oh, they smell so good. Two totally different smells here, but two things that we've just saved from going bad in the kitchen. I have a feeling over these next couple of weeks I'm going to have like one of these shows a week because I think I did one last week where we did the eggplant and we marinated the eggplant. So now we marinate, but that we do cooking. This we just do as is, the mushrooms really. Probably could do it with the eggplant. I bet you could do that with the eggplant too without cooking it. Hmm, that's something to look into. Okay, let's see. Oh, we've been, you know, I just, I haven't had a lot of lettuce. My box hasn't had a lot and I actually just got some and I wanted to make some dressing. 99% of the time all we do is we're oil and vinegar people. So I usually use balsamic and or red wine vinegar and extra virgin olive oil. Every now and then I want something a little thicker. So I'm going to show you how I make a thick dressing out of oil and vinegar. Ooh. I know which one you're making now. Oh yeah? Yep. I think this will work. The key thing is, you can actually do this in, let me see, yep, that'll work. Okay. So, um, and the only reason I was searching for something clear so you can actually see how it thickens. Most of the time, if you mix oil and vinegar, you shake it up, you put it in a blender, or whatever, it'll stay together for a couple minutes, but then eventually, boom, oil and, oil and vinegar will separate, and then you've got what's floating on top. So, I'm going to show you how to make it not separate. So, we're going to start with some extra virgin olive oil. Ooh. Ooh. So, you basically want like three quarters oil. It's a lot of oil. And about a quarter, if that, vinegar. Believe it or not, that is really the ratio. So, and what's cool when you do this... Going slow because I got one of those stopper thingies on it. Okay, let's see. That looks cool. <laughs> it does look cool, doesn't it? It's all like bubbles. Let's put a little more because not quite. But it's like one part this and four parts of oil. So I guess it's. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's, you know, about this much oil, uh, vinegar. You can always adjust it if it's not, if you like it more vinegary, or you like it more oily, whatever. We're gonna put in a pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, but that's not the secret ingredient. So what's, what's the Italian equivalent of a pinch? Pizzico. <laughs> okay, you see this garlic? You see, if you go to the store and buy that crap in a jar, right? You're looking at 
just for confirmation. Mm -hmm. When you buy that crap in a jar, it usually has something, some ingredient that you can't pronounce, and it says, used as an emulsifier. Does anybody really know what that means? It means that it makes your mixture an emulsion. What's an emulsion in science, boy? Beats me. Oh, I mean, I'm teaching you something? Yep. So when something emulsifies, it you know thicks and gets thick and stays together. I don't know what the scientific mm. terms are. So you'll see some ingredients that are crap that are used as an emulsifier. See, this is garlic. Mm -hmm. Garlic is a natural emulsifier. So when you do when you put garlic in your dressing. <laughs> And blend it up. Ha ha! Check this crap out. It sticks. No drip. Well, was there a drip? A little bit. A little bit. But it's nice and thick. Yeah. Hang on. Just I was just gonna do that. Thank you. Watch this. It sticks to the spoon, which means it also sticks to your salad. Italians are not known for making pasta salads, but in the U.S., people like pasta salads in the summer. This is the best pasta salad dressing. No mayo, just oil and vinegar, but this sticks to your pasta. It is so good, right? Yeah. So, if you want to be Italian-American, make pasta salad and use this dressing, which is still Italian style. So, this stuff, so now I'm tasting it. Now, see, I think that's just right. What do you think? Does it need more? I think it's just enough vinegar. You know, you get used to the color too. You know if it's too dark, too much vinegar, and you can, as soon as you taste it, you can tell it's too much vinegar. I think it's just right, huh? All right. Good. So now we got some salad dressing <laughs> as opposed to fruit salad. All right. So what else, Carla? What about the lettuce? Oh yes, you get my lettuce. All right. So. I'm going to show you my cool lettuce I got. Oh, I got salad dressing. So I bought this lettuce and it came with the roots on it. So I wanted to show you that the way I stored it was in water. It's best in the refrigerator with a little plastic bag on top. See, look at the cool roots. So what I'm going to do today, I'm not going to do this right now, but I wanted to show you. When I make my salad, I'm going to cut this off and leave a little bit of leaf, just a teeny weeny bit, and I'm going to stick this in a pot. We're going to watch it grow, because it should grow me another head of lettuce, if I'm very careful. So isn't that pretty? And this is the salad. We're going to make salad out of this today with that dressing. So you can put that back. I think we're just about done. Um, what do you think? I really like it with mushrooms though. Anything else, Luch? Do you make pesto? Oh, that's right. Go get it. Hey, Carlo. I forgot. I had basil that I just... Yep, yeah, both of them. Basil you just not put in the fridge because it turns brown. But the thing is, right now, things are going mm. bad quick. And so I literally just bought these yesterday. They were bright green and they're already wilting. So I was going to use some but I'm just going to blend it up because it will last me longer, fresh flavored, blended than it will. I've done this before, but I'm just sharing it with you guys again because we're here. I already washed this yesterday, so I'm just going to cut off the big stems. You can do that one if you want. And I'm just going to throw them in here. Now, I'm not making actual pesto right now. I'm just prepping it to be able to use it as basil. Um, throw it in. Because this did, look at, I mean, literally, look at this. It, I just bought it yesterday, it's already wilting. This won't last me more than two days sitting there before it starts to turn brown, and I'll either have to dry it like I did some of that stuff the other day, or throw it away. So, I'm going to put in some extra virgin olive oil. Now, even though I do this, um, I am gonna, uh, you know, to leave it as basil, I'm still gonna throw in a couple cloves of garlic. Because, because, 
you never have basil without garlic anyway, right? No, I really don't. <laughs> Especially pepper. No kidding. So when I'm going to use, when I use this, um, I'm going to, you know, I'll add, you know, if I'm going to use it as pesto for some pasta, I'll blend in some, some nuts. Actually, you know, we can throw some nuts in here. I think I've got a bag of, you know, get me some nuts out of the cabinet there. Yeah, let's, let's, let's make it more pesto-y. The thing is this, like I've said before, if you end up walnuts, I don't have any pine nuts right now, so we got to defer to walnuts. Um, but a lot of times I will make this. I have some in the fridge now that has no nuts in it, so I don't have to worry about you that. More walnuts. I do have more walnuts than that, but we can, you know, we can. They're in a bag, and they're like probably, you know, I probably can't find them because I think they're in the back. It's all right. We won't do nuts right now. All right. Because in case we have to send it to anybody, I will make pesto without nuts for people who are nut free. Like your son Tino. Like my son Tino. My son Tino Santino. Tino Santino. <laughs> You know Santino? But garlic I'll put in. Um, but if you want to put the nuts in, you can always do that later. You can put it in your, you know, in a container, put it, use your stick blender. Um, and of course, at that point, when I'm making it as pesto, I will, um, you know, if I need to, I'll add more garlic, although there's a pretty good amount in here now. And I will add cheese to it when I'm using it. So, but this I can then use as, if I don't have fresh basil, when I'm making my sauce, I'm using this. So, a little bit more. Put a spatula. A rubber spatula. Oh, here we go. We're going to just get the sides. Mmm, yum smell. Some beautiful blended basil and garlic that I will put in a jar just like just like this one so what I'll just put that in a jar similar to this a probably bigger one because that's more but like I showed people yesterday and then you pour oil on top of the whole thing and then it will congeal in the refrigerator like this every time you go to use it you take a scoop out Stir it up, let the oil come to the top again. If it's not fully covering the, the pesto or the green or the basil, add a little more extra virgin olive oil, gently put it in the fridge and it makes a nice seal on it. This is like sealing it like, you know, it'll stay forever, almost. Doesn't matter if it turns black eventually, this is still staying pretty green. The top of it is a little bit brown because that's what got mixed up and got seen, uh, seen by the air. So that's that. Um, I think there's a, a taller jelly jar up there. And we will put that in. And we're going to probably finish this up. Oh, you know. I think there's one the same size. Oh, uh, yeah, but I don't know if it's going to fit. Unless there's two of them. <coughs> yeah, just give me two little, or, you know, any, any jars. I'll give you that one and we'll, I'll fill up another one afterwards. Okay, I love these little ones. Sometimes I give them away that way. Actually, you know what? I'll give one to Nico and Enzo next time they swing by and do a drive-by pickup of mom's food. Oh, yeah, that's a little, little. I don't know if I have a lid for it. So I gotta... That's all right. I'll do it later on. All right, so don't fill it to the top. Because you want to then... Cover it with extra virgin olive oil gently so it doesn't go. And that's your seal. And then you put a lid on it, put it in the fridge, and you've got basil to use whenever you need it. So, what do you think, Carlo? Did we do all right? I think we did all right. I think we have a few minutes. Do me a favor, bring me that iron. I'm going to show you guys something totally random. This is not cooking. All right, wait a minute. Do a quick cleanup because I got something fun to show you. I have enough time. That and I'm gonna need that box of. You know what? Let's get these veggies off. The I'm gonna show you guys.
something totally random. This is not cooking. All right, wait a minute. Do a quick cleanup because I got something fun to show you. I have enough time. That. Okay. Bring that over here. So I've got two pieces of wax paper. Did you already cut it? No. Yeah, I broke. Yeah, I got a kitchen towel. So check this out. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a pain. It'll go on the dishwasher. Get the kids. And even not the kids, do it yourself. This is a grown up thing, too. Because you know what? We're kids. As I was cleaning, you know how I've been finding stuff, I've been usually sitting down, so this is our sit down time today. Um, I found this whole box of crayons. Now, Carlo is my second to youngest child, so how much crayons do you think we're using lately? <laughs> None. So. I'm more of a colored pencils kind of guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. We're gonna take this. You know, maybe I need to do a dish so I can do different colors. Oh, I'll use this tray. This will work. Okay, so you're gonna get some of these crayons. Let's give me. All right, here. I need. I need the colors of the rainbow. So, let's see. Purple. Do you have a green. I don't have a green. Let's see if we can get the broken ones first. And the rose art ones before Yellow. the crayon. Before the. Here we go. That one's already. I already got it. Here's a blue. I don't remember and which red. order they go. It's Roy D. Did. It, what is it? Red, orange, yellow. Red, orange, yellow. I need green. a red. Red. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Yeah. Okay. So, you want to peel some skin off of these? So, what you're... <laughs> I know, right? We're crazy. This is what I do when I got the kids with me. Alright, you're going to take a crayon... Let's see if I can. All the other people that do this make this look so much easier. What, peeling the skin off the crayon? Yeah. Well, you know, these crayons have been sitting for a while. They're probably a little bit more. All right. So get them halfway. So we're going to do this on the this medium side. Like, we're just going to, we're going to, okay, if I remember right, that's too fine. Wait. This is orange. Eh. You know what? Maybe the cheese grater isn't the... What do they do with the crayon? Maybe we can do it with the scissors. Yeah, we can do that. Cut little chunks off. You know, <laughs> did I just flick that at you? Wait a minute. I got an idea. I'm on a cutting board. So let's let's try doing what I am good at. Let me get one of my old knives. Um, here we go. Let's see if this will work. That works. You gotta be careful not gonna chop your fingers. But you wanna break up the crayon in some manner. You can grate it, you can chop it. All right, so this is red. Let's do a little more red. Oh, you know, this is good. If you leave half of it, I can then just do it from the long side. And I don't cut my fingers up. All right. I don't think I'm totally crazy here. So uh, this is the orange. All right, I'll take an orange. So here's red, let me do this. chopping again okay I'm making a decoration for the front door okay red orange what do you got yellow I'm working on yellow all right yellow orange the red orange yellow what then what green. green this isn't green this is this is green wrapper this isn't green crayon get green oh here we go <laughs> That was a blue crayon with a green wrapper. Go figure. I don't know what brand that is. Rose Art. Rose Art. Ta-da! Sounds like we're gonna have to call somebody about that. What? That the. That's false advertising. That is false advertising. It's green wrapper on a. Is this green? What the heck? Is this green? I don't know. They have all the, the colors on it. This is green. It's really dark green. Is there a regular? Yeah, I think this one. That's better. Good old Crayola. You know what? Don't buy any crayons that aren't Crayola. They really got the market on this. Give them credit. Give credit where credit is due. I got some crap crayons in here. Yeah, they're crap. Oops. 
This one is totally. Mm -hmm. This one just a good one. That's a that's a good purple. That's this a, is wisteria. Oh, it's wisteria. That's those pretty flowers. Yeah. They're growing those springtime. The ones down the street, at the corner of. They're actually in. I think they're invasive species. Yes, they are, but they're so beautiful. I don't mind people invading them for beautiful. Right, you know that was yeah. this one. All right, so wait, let's do the yellow first since it's done. So shape it in a little line, you know, make a little loopy. And then we're going to do orange. You're going to see this in a second. I'm a crazy, but that's okay. Orange. Ye yellow. Oh, that's big. That's a big a chunk. So's that one. I'm gonna go with the yellow boy. I really screwed that one up. Okay. Yellow. Green. Let's do that. This is gonna be cool actually. Blue. And the purple. Okay. You know, Carlo, really quickly. All right, hold on. He's going to bring the camera and just show this. Just lean it, bring it here, lean it forward, and then just put it right back. So see my, I can't, there you go. See how I like lined them up? All right. Okay, you can put it back. So now, all right, so just turn this way. Toward just, oh, yeah, there you go. I think so. A little more. Boom. Okay. Now you're going to take your other piece of wax paper on top. Then, where's my kitchen towel? Take a kitchen towel. I hope this works. I haven't done this since I was like literally a kid, or actually since you guys were little. Okay. Cheese grater didn't work. Did I not put this hot enough? I don't know which way is hot and which way is. Oh, cotton linen. That's. Oops. It's <laughs> the. All right, I didn't turn it the right way, so it didn't get really hot, so hold on. I definitely used a way bigger piece of wax paper than I needed to use, but that's all right. Let's see. All right, now it's getting hot. All right, so we're just going to iron over my crayons. Oh shit, what's it doing? It seems to be sticking. It seems to be coming through the wax paper, but that's okay. You know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna put another piece. No, I'm gonna do. Oh, that's a good idea. I have a random, I do have a random piece of foil. That's, he's smart. I'll keep him for a little longer. I didn't think that was gonna come through the wax paper, but guess what? Well, the wax paper is made. The wax paper is kind of thin. With wax. With wax. On wax. Okay, here we go. There we go. 
live and learn, right? We learn as we go. Ooh, it's getting flatter. Imagine that. So you're saying that when you melt down crowns, they get flatter? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay. Ta-da. Ooh, that side looks even more cool. Wait, let's do this side. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. Just push down. I don't want to push too hard, that's why it's getting all... Oh, see, he's correcting me. I pushed down too hard and I smushed the colors together. That's okay. You take your time, figure it out. You can put little... Oh, you know what would be cool? Is if in the wax paper you put the color and then take, like, some foil and make, like, little teeny, like, little teeny... Roll it up into little strips and put them in between and make, like, little channels. That could be kind of neat. But I'm just giving you an idea. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool looking. Anyway, ta-da! We have a little sort of a rainbow. No. But if we, well, see, then we could do something like this. Careful with that iron. We just, we could, we could cut it into. Look, we can do this. Watch this. I'm cool. This is called being creative on the on the slide. When you've got kids, you just make stuff up. bigger and, but now see look see this is cooling so it's nice and it's hard and it'll hang and it's a very artsy fartsy random I'm going to show you up close after I fall into the cabinet so check it out I think it's pretty cool don't you <laughs> I don't know I think it's kind of neat so anyway so today that's it you got me you got Carluch you got a rainbow. We saved a bunch of stuff. And um, we're going to sign off a few minutes. Actually, we're not early. I'm signing off on time. Anyway, have a great day. And um, we'll see you again. Um, not too bad, huh? For an old not lady? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Isn't he cute? Should I have him again? I need you guys to let me know if I should have him on again. Because if so, I'm going to make him work. Because, you know, he's doing nothing except studying. But he can study. He's a good student. He's uh an environmental science major. He's going to save the oceans. Well, I saved it. I'm going to save the family and people at the table, bringing them back to the table. So I'm saving the world one table at a time, and he's going to save the world one ocean at a time. I think there's more tables than oceans. Might be. Might be. So anyway, um, yeah, I think I'm going to make him come back. He's cute. I think I get more people watching when he's on. Anyway, you guys have a good day. Ciao, ciao. Have a good one. Mwah!